Lovecraft with Ken James and Jason McKittrick, brought to you by CryptoCurium. Horrible beyond conception was the change which had taken place in my best friend Crawford Tillinghast. I had not seen him since that day, two months and a half before, when he had told me toward what goal his physical and metaphysical researches were leading, when he had answered my awed and almost frightened remonstrances by driving me from his laboratory in his house in a burst of fanatical rage. I had known that he now remained mostly shut in the attic laboratory with that accursed electrical machine, eating little and excluding even the servants, but I had not thought that a brief period of ten weeks could so alter and disfigure any human creature. It is not pleasant to see a stout man suddenly grown thin, and it is even worse when the baggy skin becomes yellowed or grayed. The eyes sunken, circled, and uncannily glowing, the forehead veined and corrugated, and the hands tremulous and twitching. And if added to this there be a repellent unkemptness, a wild disorder of dress, a bushiness of dark hair white at the roots, and an unchecked growth of pure white beard on a face once clean-shaven, the cumulative effect is quite shocking. But such was the aspect of Crawford Tillinghast on the night his half-coherent message brought me to his door after my weeks of exile, such the specter that trembled as it admitted me, candle in hand, and glanced furtively over its shoulder, as if fearful of unseen things in the ancient lonely house, set back from Benevolent Street. Good evening, folks, and welcome to another episode of Learning Lovecraft. I am your host, Jason McKittrick, and joining me, as always, the traveler of the Eldritch Path, Mr. Ken James. Hey, guys, and, uh, thank God. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Uh... Well, that's a hell of an opening right there, yes. sir. Yes. Uh, and that was the opening of From Beyond by Howard Phillips Lovecraft, the uh, focus of this podcast. <laughs> if, if if you didn't know by the name, yeah, we're, we we go over the works. I'm learning H.P. Lovecraft's works, guys. Yeah. Just so you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In case you were unaware of what we do here. Yep. Strikes and gutters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so before before you get into anything. Okay. Sure. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to open this up here yeah, with please. saying, all right, guys, here's what we got coming. Mm-hmm. We got a dark old spooky house. We got a nut job guy that's in the process of researching God knows what. We have a, a straight man mm-hmm. that's like, you know, just some normal dude mm-hmm. who's like, yo, my boy's in some trouble. Yeah. And he's loyal. He's a good friend. Yeah. You get people disappearing. You get monsters. You get you get it all. And I was like, wow, here we go. Mm-hmm. This is the H.P. Lovecraft that I've always heard about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, mm-hmm. now we're talking, gang. And I just had to get that out there in the beginning. No, and uh, this is the one. Uh, I, you know what? Uh, and I'm, I'm overjoyed because this really is, in my mind, the turning point for Lovecraft. You get strange machinery. Yes. You get different colors and lights. You yeah. get, oh, dude, you get the veil thinned, like all this. Yeah, this yeah. is. Yeah. This was like I was like, all right, yeah. this is why this is why I'm interested. This tickles the Ghostbusters fan in me. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh god, that would make Ray Stans cream in his pants. <laughs> cream in his pants. I'm sure there's an entry in this uh, in uh, um, Tobin the Spirit Tobin Spirit Guide yeah. or even Spades Catalog. Yeah, well, either one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Ken. Even the air around us is inhabited by invisible, hideous creatures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just in case you wanted to know. I, you know what? I always had an inkling. Howard, yep. Howard, uh, he solidified it for me. Yep. Well, before we, uh, before we dive in, the particulars written in 1920 and was first published in the Fantasy Fan, but not until June of 1934. Um, looking into this, he he submitted this to all his usual things, and they were just not interested. Um, because they're I, stupid. I dare say, because the story was ahead of its time. Absolutely, and it's it's one of those ones that like. You know, I don't want to go, oh, my God, this is overtly scary. But it was like, it's it's like, this is my wheelhouse. Yeah. This is what I'm after. Right. It's not just that it's scary. It's that it's creepy. It's got the weird technology. Yep. It's got yep. what's going on. It's a guy yep. driven to madness for touching yep. the other yep. from beyond the other yep. side, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And it, um, it checks all the boxes. Mm-hmm. And it does it in a very economical way way like it's only what three pages four yeah, pages. yeah there's only one thing missing from this mm-hmm. no one banged an ape well some would say that's the thing missing and other would say that's the thing graciously missing okay the, you know? the thing left out graciously, thing left, graciously out. left out <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's sorry you made my my mind uh, just sorry. skip a beat sorry. uh <laughs> 
That's what I'm here for, gang. That's what I'm here for. God bless that story. Yeah. <laughs> I that, that's still like I'm, this is a great story. Like this is this oh, is yeah. my favorite so far. Um, it's this um, the statement of Randolph Carter, the tomb. That story is going to be probably still like I keep. I'm going to get better once I'm still going to yeah. go. Hmm. You like the terrible old man though too. I did like the terrible old man. Yeah, there, look, there's. The, I'm getting a lot of these great stories, but I don't think anyone is going to. That's still. That's going to have a warm place in my heart. Yes. And this one, this is this is the best by far. Yes. This is the Lovecraftian revelation. This is this is where we come to the stuff where uh, <laughs> it gets blown wide open. And like as good as this is, like the facts are concerning, it's gonna like still kind of like <laughs> it's just gonna like you know what I mean? It's just gonna stay there for something. Like, that was the most entertaining story. Yeah. This one is the coolest. Yeah. It's like guys, The Shining is a masterpiece, but you know what? Sleep Away Camp Three, put yeah. that on again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> because of its zaniness. Yeah, exactly. Like it's gonna be one of those ones. It's gonna go down. It's 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 like you. Have, you know, you have Shawshank Redemption, Tombstone, and yep. then you're like Roadhouse. Uh, Roadhouse, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh no, I, Big Trouble in Little China for me. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's like it's big. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Sorry to bring that back up into this. No, man, I, I, I this is what it's about, yeah, man. And we right. want to know your experience. I want to yeah. hear how it's, you know, what how this is, you know, how this is going for you. <laughs> um, and before we dive in, like I said, um, I think it's important to notice in a previous um, episode when we were discussing Salafius. Um, he really did start his journey towards this story in that story. Right. I think we went over a little bit. I just wanted yeah. to reiterate, but talking about you know these gases, this, you know, talking about the the secrets of the universe, that right. kind of stuff, and then you know the, the priest not to be named. But I almost want to think that he saw that paragraph and was like, you know what, this is a new direction because then he writes this. Yeah, and it's so effective, mm -hmm. right? Oh, absolutely. So. We get that first paragraph, and uh, dude, that first sentence, horrible beyond conception, was the change in which had taken place in my friend Crawford Tillinghast. What a name. Right. And like, <laughs> after the, the, the story, you know, reading prior, when I, I was like, oh, thank God. Yes. Just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was even like, he if knew. If you mention a dream, if you say one thing about a dream, <laughs> I'll There's read you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you, man. Um, but this story is this is this is like the complete opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Like it's like it just it delivers. Mm -hmm. Like and um, having read it again, and I've read this many times, but like I forgot how like this. You just read. You don't stop. Yeah, you don't right. have to like yep. this. Just goes. Like this is what every episode of like Tales from the Crypt wanted to do. Yes. Wanted tried to be like. Mm -hmm. It's all nicely packed in there. Yep. The story's great. Yep. If they, you know, the visuals he puts in your head. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah. No, this is this is this is a chef kiss. <laughs> Excellent. Right. So we have again an unnamed narrator, which I don't mind. A lot of people get. A, it's like it just makes it universal. It's exactly. just it could be you. It could be your buddy telling the story. It doesn't matter. Or, or like it could be like that voice that's like you know, you know, telling the tale from sure. beyond. Sure. I like to picture Chris Lloyd. Okay. Chris Lloyd's the narrator for all these. All of them? Yeah. Okay. I like it. I could go with that. Excellent. Good. Good, good. Uh, so, yeah. So we have Crawford Tillinghast with this name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's said that he he shouldn't have studied science and philosophy. I love this. I'm right? sorry. I, I'll go into it, but yeah. Um, and this should be left to the... the Lovecraft even says the frigid and impersonal investigator because... They offer two equally tragic alternatives to the man of feeling and action. So there's despair if he fails because, oh, God, I just I couldn't yeah. get it done. Um, and then terrors unutterable and unimaginable if he exceed. I loved yes! Yeah, yes. I loved the, <laughs> that that passage when he when he was talking about, you know, science should be left for those frigid. And, like, and yeah. you're like, oh, my, you're, you're so right. Mm -hmm. it's, that's such a, like, a, a concept that, like, you overlook as you're like, you know, I'll I'll talk to certain people that are like so accelerated with with technology and things. And like, yep. I'm I'm fairly good, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like kind of a jack of all trades with that stuff. Like yep. I don't I don't ever really get bogged down. I can usually figure something out. Mm -hmm. But there's some people that are just so adept, and yes. it's their character. Yeah. And it's just they pick it up, they go, and like there's there's no impeding it's the just, progress. Yeah, it's just the facts. It's just what it is. Yeah. It's just they go and right for yeah, it. Yeah. And I was like. Yeah, dude. Yeah. What what an observation to yeah. hit me while talking about these yeah. horrors unimaginable yep. and like the soul story. I was like I was like, Yeah, come on, man. Yeah. 
No. Bring the heat, HP. Yeah, that's why you leave these things to the Egon types. Exactly. Not the Venkman types. Yeah, everyone has, you know, like, you know, you gotta go to the core. Yeah. Uh, like, if you look at a group, a successful group, the Ghostbusters, you have, you know, yeah. your four. Yeah. You know, the uh, the formula mm -hmm. that, you know, you need the, the looks, the brains, the muscle, and, like, the, the scientist kind of yeah. guy, you know? Yeah. No, totally. Um, yeah, and, and it, it makes a lot of sense because um, this guy, they've been friends for a long time, they've known each other for a long time, and he knows that, like, this guy, he's just... He's a man of, you know, he's just, he's too emotional. He's just, yeah. he shouldn't, because he's gotten, clearly, because he's been overtaken by this stuff, as we see in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and he even says, like, that he'd been the prey of failure, solitary, and melancholy. So this is the kind of guy that withdraws, he gets down on himself, he, like, and the heights of the heights are going to drive him just as off the edge as if he's at the lows of the lows. A peak and valley type person. Yeah, exactly. But each are each I'm are one equally of those but each are equally bad. Right, the extremes. Yeah. yeah. Um so we he's he's talking about ten weeks beforehand. He told him he was like um he kind of discourages it. He's yeah. like, look, um, you know, hey, maybe, maybe no, maybe don't do this because I can see you're excitable or whatever. And at that point, uh, Tillinghast throws him out of the house. Yeah, right. Not only he's like, I can tell. He's like, he's like, you don't look good. Yeah, you know? yeah. You're a tough hang right now. <laughs> so before they have this argument, um, uh, Tillinghast kind of lays it out for him. His these new ideas, philosophies that he's kind of developed, and we get this um, this passage. What do we know? He had said of the world and the universe about us. Our means of receiving impressions are absurdly few, and our notions of surrounding objects infinitely narrow. We see things only as we are constructed to see them, and can gain no idea of their absolute nature. With five feeble senses, we pretend to comprehend the boundlessly complex cosmos. Yet other beings with a wider, stronger, or different range of senses might not only see very differently the things we see, but might see and study whole worlds of matter, energy and life which lie close at hand, yet can never be detected with the senses we have. I have always believed that such strange, inaccessible worlds exist at our very elbows, and now I believe I have found a way to break down the barriers. I never heard that before at our very elbows. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so like in your own, within your own that space. race, yeah, your own space. I was yeah. like, all right, all yeah. right. This, this, I'm just excited for this one. Like, I, <laughs> it made me excited reading it because like he's using those little things. I love that. I love a little, like a clever little turn of phrase that like makes you go, oh, yeah. like yeah. I'm a big fan of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so and also, monsters. Uh, well, who isn't? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we'd be doing this podcast if you weren't a fan of monsters. Yeah, that's true. Um, so he also goes on to tell us that Tillinghast has divided this, devised this machine, right? Um, <laughs> uh, and he's telling him that it'll um, it'll generate waves uh, acting on these these sense organs that exist in us but haven't been used. They've atrophied. Yeah. Uh, they're rudimentary. They're just they're in there, but like we've never used them and haven't used them in so long that they're just they're they're just there. They're useless. Yeah. And they're like closest to your ears, so that's what they sound like. I don't know. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, they get to that. But yeah, this yeah. is like when he has that first meeting before yeah. he throws him out. It's yeah. still in this, it's still in this like um, beginning stages of the, yeah. of the machine. So, and he even at this point before he's even able to get it together all the way, he's saying that these these waves will open up to us many vistas unknown to man and several unknown to anything with we consider organic life. Which <laughs> is like okay, and I love this part, and I know you love this part. Uh, we shall see that at which dogs howl in the dark. And that at which cats prick up their ears after midnight. Because that's spooky no matter what. You know yeah. when you're sitting there and like there's nothing there. Or they're looking at a blank wall. And yeah. it's like, what's going on? Like, yeah. those, and, and I like that because he brings in the mundane into there. You know what I mean? Yep. So, um, so he goes on to say that we shall see these things and other things which no breathing creature has yet seen. And then breaks it open even a little bit more by saying that we shall overleap time and space and dimensions and without bodily motion peer to the bottom of creation peer to the bottom of creation yeah yes yeah and also what yeah you know like and you know what that's the same kind of reaction that the friend has because he's like uh yeah no. <laughs> 
because he can s- clearly see the dude is already even before yeah. 10 weeks before he's like listen man I know how you are I know how you get and I, I wouldn't be surprised because he even says like he's gone down this road before mm-hmm. he's like yeah. yeah man I'm sure that's gonna work I'm sure you're gonna yeah. make ghosts come out of that box or yeah. whatever like <laughs> yeah. and he's just like look he's my friend I gotta, I gotta try to talk him down but not having it Killing ass isn't having it, and he throws him out of the house. As like the reader, you're like, you know, we're like, yeah, no, like all of it, do it. But then you gotta like, if in, in like, if you're in this situation and yeah. you're the guy that's like the friend, yeah, yeah, you're gonna go, bro, because if you succeed, yeah. like you're like, this is stupid, like whatever you're doing, yeah. it's silly, it's killing you, yeah, you're you're doing all this for nothing. But yeah. then in the back of your head, too, you're like, but if you do, yeah, you know, yeah. you'll you'll turn the world inside out or whatever you yeah know? because even though he is this shaky um emotional guy he's still a very smart guy and then he's like well wait what if he yeah what if he does succeed it's yeah. like what will happen so it's like yeah, either well, way what are the bananas gonna change color like what what is this machine bananas do? yeah like anything you know the yeah, germans sorry. hear that and yeah that's it. you're right <laughs> sorry <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> anyway, so fast forward a few days later, um, the narrator refi- receives this frantic letter in this shaky penmanship from Tillingass, and he asks him to come back to his house. You know, he's already thinking, this is going to be bad. But you yeah. know what? He's my friend. Once again, I think he needs my help. I'm a ride or die. Yeah. Yeah. He's a ride or die. He's friends to the end kind of thing. Kind of. Well, no, they are friends to the end. (laughs) Um, So he comes to the house, and I like how he describes it. Like, he he comes to the door, and he describes Tillinghass as a gargoyle. You know, he's holding this candle. The lights are off. um, The servants are missing. And he has this, like, hollow quality to his voice. I At this point in the story, I think I literally out loud was like, oh, this is sick. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, welcome back to the house. (laughs) The candle yeah, shaking. Yeah, follow, 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 follow the candlelight with me. I have, yeah. some, I have many things to show you. Yeah, it's like... He's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he also has this habit now that he mutters to himself, too. So, like, he's like, you know, all right, come this way. He's like, no, don't do that. If we do that, it's like, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and he's like, I don't, he never did that. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, this is, this is, not, this is not awesome. He's yeah. like, oh, God. So... He leads him up to the this attic. Awesome. This is not awesome. That's exactly what he says. He's yeah. like, this is not awesome. Yeah. Texas girl. He's like, yeah. I'm not going to be back for yeah. a while. Yo, know, if anything, if I don't call you in an hour, you know, yeah. send the homies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they go up to the attic, and now he sees the device again. However, it is different now. Um, first, it glows violet from yeah. somewhere like yeah. it glows but it's like the source of the glow is kind of like not apparent which is really interesting and there's no electrical current it has what he thinks might be a chemical battery yeah. interesting and it has these glass bulbs around it so this instantly um, made me think about Tesla yeah which I'm not going to go too deep in because he we're going to talk about him Late uh, in the Nihilathotep story because it's, it's yeah. instantly connected. But immediately I was taken back to like um, um, the Prestige, where they show like his 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 devices, and I'm like, okay, this is what this is. It's outside, like like take something like if you were to take a piece of technology like from today, some kind of like aerospace, some kind something that we found in Brian's yeah. lab, yeah. you know, and yeah. put that in 1920, yeah, and someone would be like what is this? Yeah. That's what it feels like. It's like something that was taken from a different, like a completely different realm of science yeah. and it's just sitting there. He's like, well, uh, it's got glass tubes. I think that's a chemical battery yeah. and it's glowing purple. Yeah. I don't know what it is. He's like, it must work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny that you mentioned the prestige because I I have something for you later uh, with this one. Yeah. Um, so he wastes no time and it's time to power up the machine. And the luminosity increases. And uh, we get this this next passage. Do you know what that is? He whispered. That is ultraviolet. He chuckled oddly at my surprise. You thought ultraviolet was invisible, and so it is. But you can see that and many other invisible things now. Listen to me. The waves from that thing are waking a thousand sleeping senses in us. Senses which we inherit from eons of evolution, from the state of detached electrons, to the state of organic humanity. 
I have seen truth, and I intend to show it to you. Do you wonder how it will seem? I will tell you. Here Tillinghast seated himself directly opposite me, blowing out his candle and staring hideously into my eyes. Your existing sense organs, ears first, I think will pick up many of the impressions where they are closely connected with the dormant organs. Then there will be others. You have heard of the pineal gland. I laugh at the shallow endocrinologist, fellow dupe and fellow parvenu of the Freudian. That gland is the great sense organ of organs I have found out. It is like sight in the end and transmits visual pictures to the brain. If you are normal, that is the way you ought to get most of it. I mean, get most of the evidence from beyond. Okay, so... How did he know about the... the pineal gland back then like well so just from the little um little i looked into things with the pineal gland because they didn't know what it was for a long time yeah like the, like it was like a, a mystery and looking into it i um it uh it produces melatonin and doesn't it when you die it releases like the dmt before you die allegedly and it also um inhibits um puberty in children it has like all these weird things that it does. Like those, that's the three weird things yeah. that, that for a thing to do. Yeah. But for like an organ in your body. To yeah. Do, yeah. But he takes this this stance that it, it, it's like almost like a third eye. Yeah. And if you ever see the movie From Beyond, which we'll watch that at some point. Okay. Have you ever seen that? No. Jeffrey Combs. It's a Stuart Gordon production. I know everyone. I know everyone loves Stuart Gordon, but it's it's very far removed from the from the source material. Yes, there's a machine and all that, but Jeffrey Combs' character, the pineal gland, pops out of his his forehead, and he has like this little like thing. It's, it's weird. All right. Yeah. Anyway, so he landed on this this pineal gland, and it's okay. And he goes forward with this, saying that this is this is the thing. So when that gets activated, yeah. like our mind becomes almost like this big prism, almost, and like all these things are able to be like seen, right? Yeah. Um, and I like that he he goes into like he's like he sits across, he's like, first you're gonna hear it, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah. all right, <laughs> freaking me out, yeah, man. <laughs> Like you hear it in the ears, it's like the beginning of Super Troopers when he hears the kids playing in his ears. It's like I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> um, and then directly after this, snozberries taste like snozberries. Exactly, starts licking the wallpaper. Yeah. So this is where the narrator starts to see things, right? Yes. Um, and the first image he gets, pure Lovecraft, because he says that he he fancied himself in some vast and incredible temple of long dead gods. What? <laughs> Some vague edifice of innumerable black stone columns reaching up from the floor of damp slabs to a cloudy height beyond the range of my vision. Like, I'm sorry to go back to it again, but like, oh, Temple of Gozer. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I know that's way after, but like, that's yeah. where I go. I'm like, yeah. Because you think of like that temple opening and all yeah. this the smoke and like you can see, but then when you the part where you they, they go inside and you see there's like something up there. Yeah. It's, like, it's the same kind of. And also too, because he goes into like talking about like yeah. I'm seeing this, but then when I focus on the room, mm -hmm. I can see the room. So it's almost like a double like uh, like an imprint on top of the one. Yeah. And I loved that visual. I was like bouncing back and forth trying to think of like how mm -hmm. that would actually seem and look, mm -hmm. and how you could even make that like you know, yeah. not doing it like in like the early. 90s, 80s, like TV yeah. show of like, oh, the picture, yeah, fading. like layered imagery. But then also, I think he gives at some point he gives the um, the idea of like um, uh, a projector, yeah, like, like a movie projector, like projecting yeah. the image, right? Um, and then he goes on to say that um, the picture that it was like it was very vivid for a while, right? Like you said, but gradually it gave way to this more horrible conception that of utter, absolute solitude and in infinite, sightless, soundless space. So it's like um, you go from this like mind expanding, almost like you know trippy kind of thing, yeah. to like the exact opposite. There's yeah. nothing here. Like there's nothing, which is also kind of like you know when you see in like um, uh, like in Stranger Things when they go to the the, the other side, but then yeah. but when they first show it, it's just black. Yeah, and they're just in this black space. Yeah, and it's just you, and it's like okay. Yeah, <laughs> but they're almost existing at the same time, yeah. which is kind of crazy, um, and. He says that there seemed to be a void and nothing more, and I felt a childish fear which prompted me to draw from my hip pocket the revolver I always carried after dark since the night I was held up in East Providence. Well, yeah. Well, that little detail dropped yeah. in there. Hence me going like that, checking yep. earlier. Yeah. Yep. It's like, I always carry this. Yeah. Now. Just in case. Yeah. I have to shoot 
an otherworldly monster <laughs> or something or something yeah. yeah um thank god he had it though you know yeah yeah he would have been uh in some trouble yeah 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 <laughs> yes he would have um yeah so then like he says, then he starts to hear this this sound, which is kind of cool. He then the the farthermost regions of remoteness, this sound like softly glided into existence. It was infinitely faint, subtly vibrant, and unmistakably unmistakably musical, but held a quality of surpassing wildness, which made its impact feel like a delicate torture of my whole body. Uh, I felt sensations like those one feels when accidentally scratching ground glass. So. This is as close as we get to some of that flowery stuff yeah. from the last tale, and also reminded me of that part from Beyond the Wall of Sleep when he finally like when the, when the, that that device because that's another story yeah. with a device. And right. This is almost like he was like, all right, I took some of that, but let's refine it a little bit more. Yeah. And like this works kind of almost the same way. This the sounds yeah. come in, but it's not the sounds you would expect. And it's not like a buddy cop movie. You know? No, it is not. No. <laughs> um, and I like that it's like. Um, that there's this musical nature to it too. It's like why yeah. that's not what you would expect. Right. Like weird buzzing or static or something or like just like something like that you would expect, but like that there's music to it. I think that's an even weirder dimension that he adds to it. I went to you know when we um we did on the one episode of our other podcast we did the the they recorded uh what was it? The sounds from like Saturn the mm -hmm. planet. Remember when they got the actual oh, yeah. sound? Yeah. That's what kind of was going through my head that yeah. like uh, but it yeah. almost does have like a musical type does, quality because you know? there's a repetition to it. But yeah. it's like it's it's like multiple repetitions, so it does kind of become yeah. music. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, good call. So, and I I love these passages. By the way, whenever Tillinghast uh, speaks, uh, I'm like yes. <laughs> so we get this um, this this passage from Tillinghast. Don't move. He cautioned, for in these rays we are able to be seen as well as to see. I told you the servants left, but I didn't tell you how. It was that thick-witted housekeeper. She turned on the lights downstairs after I had warned her not to, and the wires picked up sympathetic vibrations. It must have been frightful. I could hear the screams up here in spite of all I was seeing and hearing from another direction, and later it was rather awful to find those empty heaps of clothes around the house. Mrs. Updike's clothes were close to the front hall switch. That's how I know she did it. It got the all. But so long as we don't move, we're fairly safe. Remember, we're dealing with a hideous world in which we are practically helpless. Keep still. So, there's his explanation. I mean, first, because you're able to receive these, you know, visions, you can see all this stuff. But, but they, they can see you too now. Yes. So whatever, and 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 he says this before we even get into the description of that. It's like, it's like using the Shining. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Kind of. Kind of. Especially if you watch Doctor Sleep or read Doctor Sleep. Like once you use it, you lose it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. That, that's what I was going with. So then we get the, this where he starts seeing. He starts seeing these things, and this is this is this is great. I mean. Yeah, this is this is where I was saying that this is where I think the world exploded out of him. Yes, I think this is at this point of him writing. I got the feeling of like this is where all his monsters like he knew. Yeah, and when he's describing how they flop around, they're moving. Mm -hmm. I felt like like oh he did it. like he knew he did it. Mm -hmm. He knew this is where it was. Yep, and he was like, yep, got it. Yep, and and he describes them coming out of almost just like unknown areas they just come out of an area and because they're beyond time and space it's like well i don't have to say where it came from yeah. the machine is causing them to enter our reality yep and like you said he describes these great inky jellyfish monstrosities which flabbily quivered uh in harmony with the vibrations with the machine so i'm i'm, I'm, I'm imagining like as it like pulses they're like pulsing with it and they're just all around mm -hmm. and then that they they kind of move in like between each other and through each other. Yeah. So like they exist just like in Ghost. Though. Yeah. So they exist in this in this universe but also at the same time not. Like they're half in half out. Yeah. <clears throat> Cthulhu. Um <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> and there's they're everywhere. Like he says they're all it's a loathsome profusion. Um and yeah, the, the semi-liquid nature to them. Um and then there's another part where like He's he's observing them and like he seems to see like oh they're kind of moving toward each other and then it looks like that they like devour each other 
Yeah. Which is also interesting because it's like, okay, like, what are we seeing here? Is this like, are we seeing some, is this something that is happening all the time and they're just moving? Like, these things yeah. are here now. They're moving through us and every once in a while they eat one another and, like, we're just, we have no idea. Yeah. What they, yes. And, and when that happens, does something, like, click and then the dog sees it or, like, kind of perceives it a little bit? Yeah, right. Like, I don't you know. You know what I mean? Like, that's. Or is that what's, like, funneling, like, energy to this existence? Like, like is that. You know, like the function, and then like that gives the energy to our world. You know, I yeah. don't know. I don't That's know how a spirit box works, basically. Yeah, that that event is what powers a spirit box. There it is. Every time one eats another, <laughs> you get Robin Williams' voice in the box. Who I just found out died, by the way. Did you? Yeah, you told me. Remember? That's right. Last week. <laughs> um. So then, the narrator kind of like he's like, oh. He gets this idea where he's like, well, he said that the, the, the servants died from these sympathetic vibrations. Like, they were like, you know, she turns the light on, and because of that, it kind of interacts with the machine, and boom, they're just gone. Yeah. But then he's like, I don't know, because I'm watching these things eat each other, and he just told me that they can see me now. Yeah. Maybe they ate the servants. Yeah, that's what I would have <laughs> Right? Um, and he's just um, he's just taken aback because he's, you know, he's taken a minute, and he's just like, okay, so these things are real now. Yeah. All right. This is part of my... Yep. My lore now. Yeah. Um, and then we get another great passage that, you know, we're going to have to hear. You see them? You see them? You see the things that float and flop about you and through you every moment of your life? You see the creatures that form what men call the pure air and the blue sky? Have I not succeeded in breaking down the barrier? Have I not shown you worlds that no other living men have seen? So good. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, he was saying he was uncomfortably close to his face, right? Yes. And like his eyes are glowing, yeah. This, he looks wild, and I, I yeah. have this visual. I yeah. got it. He's looking forward. You know, he's in this chair, just yeah. like, what the fuck? And then this guy is just uncomfortably close. Yes, just talking to, talking at him. Mm -hmm. You know, looking all crazy, looking wild. You know, just wild him. <laughs> that ultraviolet purple glow yeah. all yep. around him mm -hmm. shined off him, and his eyes are glowing. You're like, yep. Okay. Yeah. And this is also another uh, thing worth mentioning here is that, like, this is very much part of that Lovecraftian conception of um, too much curiosity or knowledge or digging into things will cause insanity. Yeah. Like, we can't handle all the things that the universe contains. Yes. Because this machine, which maybe has just, it's almost like a flashlight in a huge dark cave or yeah. something. You can see stuff sometimes that even this has caused Tillinghast because he's so emotional and so not, and he's not devoid of emotion. Yeah. Like, he can't handle it. He's completely just, he's shot. Right. And, um, it shows us how much within this universe, this, the, in the Cthulhu mythos, that humanity is fragile. Like, we can't exist in the same spaces as these things um, cognitively because it just destroys us. Like, yeah. It's just like, wait, I know this. I know yeah. this is the sky. This is the ground. You know, I'm a human. I nope. do this. Nope. And this doesn't fit in my conception. And it's... It's wonderful. It's so wonderful. And like I said before, I... <laughs> these quote these these passages where he speaks are pure gold because <laughs> you can tell Lovecraft is just having Lovecraft is having a humdiddly do of a yeah, good time writing yeah. these things. Yeah. Um, so we get this this next passage, which is one of my favorites in the entire story. You think those floundering things wiped out the servants? Fool. They are harmless. But the servants are gone, aren't they? You tried to stop me. You discouraged me when I needed every drop of encouragement I could get. You were afraid of the cosmic truth, you damned coward, but now I've got you. What swept up the servants? What made them scream so loud? Don't know, eh? You'll know soon enough. Look at me. Listen to what I say. Do you suppose there are really any such things as time and magnitude? Do you fancy there are such things as form or matter? I tell you, I have struck depths that your little brain can't picture. I have seen beyond the bounds of infinity and drawn down demons from the stars. I have harnessed the shadows that stride from world to world to sow death and madness. Space belongs to me, do you hear? Things are hunting me now, the things that devour and dissolve. But I know how to elude them. It is you they will get, as they got the servants. Stirring, dear sir, I told you it was dangerous to move. I have saved you so far by telling you to keep still. 
saved you to see more sights and to listen to me. If you had moved, they would have been at you long ago. Don't worry, they won't hurt you. They won't hurt you. They didn't hurt the servants. It was seeing that made the poor devils scream so. My pets are not pretty, for they come out of places where aesthetic standards are very different. Disintegration is quite painless, I assure you, but I want you to see them. I almost saw them, but I knew how to stop. You are not curious. I always knew you were no scientist. Trembling, eh? Trembling with anxiety to see the ultimate things I have discovered? Why don't you move then? Tired? Well, don't worry, my friend, for they are coming. Look, look. Look, curse you, look. It's just over your left shoulder. Yeah, at that point, he's like almost like trying to get him to move. He's like yep. trying to scare him into flinching, you know, and it's... Now, here's the thing. Um, so there's two types of creatures then, right? Because yeah. he can see the jellyfish ones. Yeah. They are scary, and they're monstrosities, but they're kind of harmless because they're kind yeah. of only like they're really only interested in they're, moving around yeah. and when they bump into one another they kind of consume yeah, each other they're doing their own thing yeah they're almost amoeba like yes. or, uh, and like jellyfish like where it's just like they kind of just right that's where I was kind of thinking too it's like almost like that was the lower life form kind of yes. deal like that was yes. like you said amoeba like that was like when you know when you blink and sometimes you get it in your eye like you see the, all the you, floaters yeah it's like that kind of thing it's like yeah. like under a microscope yes and it's that you know you, you're this big mm -hmm. they're this big but they're the low life form in right. that in that space so there's, a, there's another undescribed more dangerous creature that inhabits this space that we can't see because if you see it, then it sees you. Yeah. So you have to stay still. And Tilling has this kind of told him that you just got to stay still and you'll be fine. But he wants him dead because yeah. he's pissed. He's like, hey, I needed your your support back there. Yeah. You know, I was making a breakthrough and, you know, I really could have used your support. If you can't handle me at my worst, yeah. you don't deserve me at my best. Sure. And any other memes that have, yes. uh, you know, come it's out of that. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so these other unseen creatures are clearly the ones that killed the servants. Yeah. The woman turns on the light. I don't know what the hell she saw. I get some kind of giant tentacled eyeball creature, one of his a Lovecraft special, as I like to call it, <laughs> just and just devoured her. I don't even like want to like put like a creature on it yet. You know no, what no. I mean? It's better that it's not this right. But that's what I'm saying, like, yeah, I, I don't even like in my own head. I don't want to yeah. assign a yeah. form mm -hmm. at this point. Very good, sir. Later on. Well, you no, they never. I'm saying later on, I yeah. might want to, in my own head, you might play with designs. Yeah, you know. Yeah. As of now, no, it's just an invisible thing. Right. That's horrible in some way that I can't even comprehend. Horrible beyond conception. Yes. And 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 I think that it's like that's that's the true horror where it's like like all right, we showed you these amazing things. You've seen these. The thing that you haven't seen, uh, forget it. Remember in scary, scary movie two, uh huh, when. Uh, Cindy's running from the skeleton. Yeah. And she runs into, uh, uh, what's her <laughs> yes. name? Uh, Deborah, what is it? What is it? Mm. Brenda. And she's like, what is it? What is it? Is it a monster? And it's like behind her. And yeah. then, like, you know, she's like, this is just a skeleton, you know? Yeah. Like, but, like, that's the thing. Like, the, what? Yeah. Ah, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. so scary. Yes. What is it? Do I, I don't yeah. know. I don't want to look. Yep. yep. So, um. And then you take its head off and put it on its dick. Right. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. It's, <laughs> it's your story. Um. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so then that's we get like that's the end of like this part of the story because we he moves into the conclusion after this right so um and it's kind of a brief sum up where he said um he talks about you know it's brief he's like and if you you know read the newspaper accounts you know you'll be familiar with what happened um but that night police heard a shot at the old Tillinghass house and um found them both there um Tillinghass was dead and he, and um the narrator was unconscious um they arrested him but because he had the revolver yeah. in his hand but then later release him because they found that Tillinghast had died of apoplexy a note on apoplexy. <laughs> this is an antiquated term. They don't use it anymore. Right. Um, and this is... They could they would use it for a bunch of different uh, things that could happen to someone. It could have been someone who had a stroke, a, cere um, a cerebral hemorrhage, um, someone that just either passes out, um, some kind of major embolism, something along yeah. those lines. So they're saying he died of this apoplexy, right? 
and we'll get back to that. Um, and that had finished him off. And they saw that his shot had been directed at the machine. So he didn't, even, he didn't want to kill his boy in the end either. Right. Um, he didn't tell. He didn't go into the monsters. Yeah. He didn't say anything. Uh, and he he because he knew that the the coroner was like what? Yeah. Because he already knew. He's like no one's gonna believe this. Yeah. Um, so he gives him this kind of like BS kind of outline. Like, so oh, he dude, went crazy. He went over there. The pineal gland exploded in his brain. Yeah. Because he was so connected to the machine, you know. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I was going to get to because um, they come to the conclusion that the the coroner and the, and the police both say he's like, well, you know what? You were just hypnotized by this guy. He was yeah. just this homicidal madman. You were just kind of like hypnotized for a while. Yeah. Okay, fine. But yeah, he <laughs> shoots the machine. And yeah, the sudden like disruption and like just being snapped off from the connection yeah. so f- just yeah fried his his brain his yeah. pineal gland and that was it for him. Yep. So like being connected like that so and just having such a quick break just completely destroyed him. Yeah. So this was it. Man. This was the big turn in Lovecraft's writing, like you said as well. Yeah. Um, the scope has been widened, yes. right? Uh, unseen creatures that inhabit our world who are potentially dangerous to yes. us have yes. been introduced into the world. We have this cosmic kind of thing that can come in now. And um, the sky's the limit now. Uh, I, have, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Okay, this is a, a big one. Mm-hmm. Dream casting. If this was a, a show, movie, whatever, mm-hmm. I was thinking at first... Okay. The Prestige... Christian Bale, okay. And Hugh Jackman, you get that that would that could work. Okay. Either way, but I was thinking Ed Norton could play both these people. See, I I don't like Ed Norton. I'm not I don't like fan. him either. I don't like him either. Here's my ca- here's my casting. For the unnamed narrator, I could go. I could do Hugh Jackman. I could do Hugh Jackman. Uh, I actually probably would go with Hugh Jackman. That's not a bad. But for Crawford Tillinghast, Michael Shannon. Yeah. Think yeah. about him acting all, and then the yeah. staring part. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, no, he, he, yeah, I would like to see someone that doesn't look so fucking crazy already. But he does, and when we meet him in the story. Yeah, right, but I'm saying, like, maybe, like, a, a someone made to look disheveled. Like, at one point, he didn't look like he could be the son so of So the guy fun. from, the guy from Seven who wore the, uh, the, uh, the piece, <laughs> have him no, show up yeah. as a... Uh, we were just, we were just, we were just, we were just, we were just... <laughs> but what, what, yeah. what? Get this thing out of me! What's yeah. inside me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Panic attack, man. I would go with I. I would go with Michael Shannon because I think he could, he could, he could look straight laced but still be like this guy. Don't get on this guy's bad side. Right. But then like have them all, you know, fine hair back, looking good, his little lab coat, you know, talking about all this stuff. But then and but still have that intensity. Yeah. But then fast forward when they come to the door and he's just yeah. unshaven. He's got a beard going. He's just out of his mind. I think it'd be cool to have some a comedian. Yeah, they, a comedic actor they bring, yeah. that would like just let that darkness out that, that they held up like the first time they did it. I have to think of a good one. Yeah, I know someone's out there would go would go Tom Hanks, and I want to punch him in their face. No. Well, that's the third mention of Rob Williams today. Yeah, uh, but she didn't know about it. We got to get the bottom of that. Sorry, folks. There's a third person in the room. Yeah. <laughs> um. I have to think about that. I mean, you know what? I think going forward, that might be a good segment for uh, to add to these episodes. Dreamcasting, our, yeah. our, our, our dream casting for each of these, uh, each yeah. of these as a movie. I was thinking Only about if that. they merit it though, because some stories I don't care. Right, it's like <laughs> the last one <laughs> or the street. <laughs> Oof. Man, I, that's a good question. And now that I know that this is coming up, I will dreamcast all of them before we come to it but that's that's a good idea I, i'm gonna stick with for right now if i if it changes uh in between now and the next recording I'm, I'll, I'll update it but michael shannon as crawford tilling yeah. i think that's that's a win for me right. and I, I i could go with this unnamed narrator um i Christopher could go Lloyd. With, with too old <laughs> i know i'm scared i have to think a young chris lloyd though would be good in both roles like go back to clue christopher lloyd that's you know? true but that when you bring him in there's an air of comedy that I don't want to bring in because, and here's the only reason why, the movie that exists from Beyond that that is out there now is ha, is laced with like black comedy. Oh, okay. And I would want a straight You're right. Lovecraftian yeah. adaptation yeah. that like You're takes right. it very like overly serious because that's kind of like what. So makes Michael it J. Fox. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Whoa. <laughs> it would get dark fast. Wow. 
He's Crawford Tillinghast. Yeah. That was the t- <laughs> Going straight to hell, oh. Ken. Dude, long time to fast the time travel. Wow. <laughs> this got dark. <laughs> hey, man, this story brought it out of me. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, yeah, no, I, I love this story. Um, I think you love this story. Yeah, no, like I said, the, I felt like the, his, like, world. Yeah. His whole, like, I just, like, yeah. it exploded out of him in this story. And it was like, these creatures are things. Mm-hmm. I'm starting at, like, the amoeba level yeah. of the creatures. We just finally peered through to that other side that isn't a dream world. Yeah. It's the stuff beyond our realm of comprehension. Yes. And you know, and this time it's not dream creatures that are wonderful. It's yeah. these malignant, malicious, just not caring, just yeah. ready to devour. Yep. It's in their nature, and they're here yep. all the time. Yep. Um, and and just the fact that this story includes the line, "I have seen beyond the bounds of infinity and drawn down demons from the stars." That gets us going, baby. That's awesome. And also, the best insult ever, a uh, shaking parody of a man, yeah. is just calling someone a shit. I'm looking at this. Like next time I see someone that's like a little scared about something, I'm like yeah. look at this shivering parody of a man. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna change the first part up a bunch. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, cowering parody of a man. Yeah, yeah. You and know, then you'll make the same face that Will Ferrell makes in Step Brothers when he says, "The last time I heard that, I fell off my dinosaur," and he's like, yeah. almost cries a little bit. Yeah. No, it's all right. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I like it. Yeah, I like it. No, yeah. he makes his own, <laughs> he makes his own sauce. It's called fancy sauce. <laughs> Okay, folks. <laughs> well, I think that's that's all it's fit to print for uh, from beyond. Any further comments? Any closing statements? Anything you want to no, add? No, this 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 thing this story rocks shit. All right. You know? I hope this I hope this kind of like wet your appetite a little bit more and kind of piques your interest yeah. going forward because I promise you that there's a lot less of the Dunsanian stuff going further. There's still a little. There's some elements that are going to show up again, but I feel like he got to a point. He's like, okay, just use it for this. Yeah, like, now that we got here and, like, the knife has, like, penetrated the skin yeah. at this point, you know? Yeah. We're not fully stabbing anyone yet, but, like, it's yeah. it's in there now. The so, rift has been opened. Exactly. Like, if I hear some more of this Dreamland stuff, I'm going to shred it, you know? Well, forward. there are Dreamland stories. Yeah, but, I'm, dream I mean, if, but if it's, like... Frilly. Yeah, yeah I if, gotcha. if we're floating around, you know? We're definitely going to have segments of the story where he goes to the moon and talks to cats and yeah. he talks in cat language yeah, and I don't, armies I, of cats. That's definitely not yeah. going to happen. I'm, I'm, t- I'm tired of being cute here, Howard. You know, bring me horrors unimaginable. Oh, it's coming. Good, good. It's coming. That's all I got, buddy. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm glad we finally got to this spot. We've, I, we've definitely gotten to a mile marker, which is great. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking forward to what's coming up because, oh my God, do we have two absolute bangers in the, in, in, in the, the pipeline next, and it's going to be... Actually, one last thing. Yeah, yeah. This brought me mm-hmm. some panic. Not the creatures yeah. or anything. The uh, thinking about the scale, the unfathomable yeah. darkness going past that. Yeah. I started getting a little, all right. Yeah. Because my brain went there. It's not like it's not like me like looking at the story. Yeah. It's the thought process it invokes. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is yeah. what this is why we're here. Oh yeah. To test my metal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Well, that's that's all we got for From Beyond. So for this episode of Learning Lovecraft, I've been Jason McKittrick. And I've been Ken James. And we'll see you beyond the wall of sleep. <laughs>